Well, hello, America, and welcome back to another Founding Friday. When um, I first had the idea of uh, Founders Fridays, uh, I didn't even know if anybody would watch them. And they are some of our highest rated shows that we have had, our highest rated Fridays out of all my whole time in television. America is hungry for the truth that they never learned. And the idea is pretty simple. We spend an hour telling stories of our founders um, that you've never heard before. Have Americans fall in love with the people that started this country all over again? And it's really not that hard to do. Their courage, their determination, their, their fearlessness, their stubbornness. I fell in love with these three guys. This guy is absolutely incredible. Ben Franklin, there's nobody like him on planet Earth today. George Washington, I hope that we can find our George Washington. Honorable, trustworthy, decent. Samuel Adams, oh my gosh, he'd be in some sort of PC jail now. He's so unbelievably religious and didn't mind anybody saying, hey, Sam, have a seat, stop with the God stuff. Except in his time, really, nobody was saying that. I wanted to tell you about history because I've fallen in love with American history. It's the history of our country, and it's not being taught anymore. You want to save our country? You can talk about politics all you want. But you want to save our country. You've got to know who we are. I was out on the road last weekend. Um, I was in um, St. Louis and Columbus, Ohio. And everybody I met, everybody was talking about Founding Fridays. Oh, the Founding Fridays, man, it's the best. They were talking about history. History. When was the last time that was happening in this country? But there was one show that has stood out in particular to most people on these Friday shows. And I think it's because there's a, there's a whole section of our history that has been completely wiped off the face of the earth. It is a story of a group of people that are courageous. They are founders that nobody even talks about anymore. Nobody even knew that they were existing. They did up until around the Civil War. They are our black founders. At first, I wasn't sure how people would react to the show. Quite honestly, um, after the program, I spent about 20 minutes with the audience, and a lot of them were really hacked off. They were angry that a huge piece of American history had been eliminated. After the show, I talked to a couple of uh, African Americans that work on the staff, and they, Jack, where's Jack? Is he still here? Jack was uh, talking to me. He's our sound guy, and he said, I talked to my father afterwards, my son. He said, I understand. He said, my son watched the show with me. He said, stood up and swore. He said, he doesn't swear in front of his father. He says, I'm sorry, Dad. I can understand maybe why your generation didn't learn this, but why didn't we? People in the audience, and I want to show you a little clip of what happened after the show, couldn't believe what they were hearing. Watch. Liberal Democrats didn't jump on the civil rights train until it became politically convenient to do yeah. so. What is this anti-American sentiment that, that's going on? LBJ and JFK are, are lauded in the black community, but they didn't support the Civil Rights Act of 1957. How precisely did Woodrow Wilson become lionized by the progressive movement? Well, he didn't like the founders, he didn't like the Constitution. He didn't like the sure. country. Yeah. He was, what, the president of Princeton? He was Princeton, president of Princeton. Of Princeton University. The governor of New York. Democrat. Um, an avowed racist. How exactly did all of this get expunged from history? They've named scholarships for minorities after this man. Oh. <laughs> and it's infuriating well, when you think about it. The progressive that's right. that the sure. evil sure. came, that's right. uh, came out of. And again, you don't know this because Wilson was a propaganda that's right. expert. On Crispus Attucks, he perhaps was the first American killed in the Revolutionary War. And we don't know, most people don't know that. He was a black man. He's the only one from the founding era that I've seen taught in public textbooks for the last 40 years, is Crispus Attucks. Nobody else. This is an incredible show. Um, I'm going to spend some more time learning about our black founders and restoring this part of history. All this summer, you are going to learn things. You are going to learn things. <clears throat> that I am convinced will change the course of this country. We are going to set history right again. Find out 
who we really truly are. So much of our differences will be erased. So many of the problems that we face now, we don't have to face. Uh, things have been erased to separate us. This is a book that I want you to pick up, American History in Black and White. It's been now on the Amazon bestseller list for a while, uh, since really since that show. Uh, David Barton is uh, here. He's the founder and president of Wall Builders and author of American History in Black and White. And David, I have to tell you, I was reading this book. It's, it's an easy read, and it's all, it really only scratches the surface. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I have to tell you, I was ashamed of myself. I started to read this, and I saw this. Um, this is a Thanksgiving sermon, preached January 1st, 1808. And so I'm reading this sermon. Who is it given by, David? Absalom Jones, the Who? Reverend Absalom Jones. Who is he? He is a black founder. Mm -hmm. He is the first black Episcopal bishop. He is the guy who served with signer of the Declaration of Benjamin Rush to treat the yellow fever epidemic of 1793, probably the first black trained physician trained by signer of the Declaration. Uh, but that's Really, a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember right, really an amazing physician oh, yeah. as well. He right. was. He and Richard Allen, both. It was, it was an amazing thing. When that yellow fever epidemic of 1793 hit, Philadelphia was where it hit. That was the national capital. You had President Washington there. You had the House, the, the, the Senate. The, it hits. Nobody knows what causes yellow fever back then. Who knew that it was mosquitoes? 40,000 people in town. It killed 4,000 people. So 10% wow. of the, the population. Doctors don't know what caused it. You got dozens of doctors in Philadelphia. They all left town except Dr. Benjamin Rush. He said, God called me to serve in medicine. I'm not leaving because it's dangerous. The other two guys that stayed were two black preachers, Richard Allen, Absalom Jones. Those three guys took care of 30,000 folks in Philadelphia themselves. On top of that, Absalom Jones and Richard Allen would bury up to 120 folks a day that died as a result of yellow fever. Oh Everybody else has le left town. I mean, they're, okay. they're gone. All right, so now wait a minute. Um, uh, uh, Richard Allen was also... Um, he was a preacher at a white church, right? A mega church. A, a mega church. He, he, was, he would preach to 2,000 whites at a church in Philadelphia. He, he Again, was, give me the year. And this is about 1790s. Okay. How many here in the audience have been led to believe that in the 1790s, blacks and whites hated each other, it was slavery, right? And how many people, raise your hand, how many people said, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. We, just, we just hated each other. Yeah. Actually, the truth is, with Richard Allen, this mega, mega preacher, he tried to segregate. Yeah. Tell me the story. In the 1790s, he proposed having a black denomination. And both whites and blacks said, we don't want to do that. No, we want the integrated stuff. We don't we want separate denominations. There was finally an overt act of racism in one church that kind of gave him the impetus to go ahead and start a black denomination. But for years, neither blacks nor whites wanted a separate denomination because they worshiped together in, in those churches in Philadelphia okay. and elsewhere. All right. Um, that's not to say that there weren't racists. At the no, there point. absolutely were. There's always racists. Uh, yep. There always will be. Um, all right. So I'm reading this book, and I'm reading, um, I'm reading this sermon. Um, and I have to tell you, I'm ashamed of myself because I come to this, I come to this part. In behalf of our brethren, it becomes us this day to offer our united thanks. Let the song of angels, which was first heard in the air, the birth of our Savior, be heard on this day in assembly. Let us sing psalms to him and talk of all of his wondrous works. Let, listen to this, let the first day of January be set apart every year as a day of thanksgiving. And when our children shall ask in time to come, saying, what mean the lessons, the psalms, the prayers, and the praises in the worship of this day? Let us answer them by saying, The Lord, on the day of which this is the anniversary, did what? Does anybody want to say? Has anybody ever heard of this? The first of January should be celebrated in the entire country every year. And when our children, it should be such a big deal that when our children come and say, What is the meaning of of the celebration on the 1st of January. Anybody? One. Uh, the Constitution states that uh, not until 1808 can you uh, abolish the African slave trade. So that is a date, uh, January 1st. Uh, Abraham Lincoln actually talks about it in hot haste. Uh, they put that law into effect. Okay. How many people knew that? 